But now we move straight on to our last panel of the day, which is panel six. It is corporate adaptation and change management. Uh, and of course, we've been talking so much through the day about culture and behavior. So now we really get into it. Fascinating discussion. Our moderator for this is Nordin Taj. He is technology strategy, architecture, and digital innovation lead at BP. Nordin, over to you. Hello, everyone. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Welcome, everyone. Uh, uh, good morning, good evening, depending on where you're located. Uh, my name is Nordin Taj. I'm part of digital strategy and architecture in BP's digital innovation and engineering organization. Today, we have an Industry thought leaders as our expert panelist with a wealth of knowledge in change management and digital transformation in the energy industry. I will soon have them introduce them and tell them, uh, they will tell them more about, about uh, what they do and uh, their expertise. Our topic today, uh, as was introduced, is corporate adaption and change management. And I'm going to take a few minutes to introduce this topic and then we'll Go to the panel for introduction, and then uh, we'll start the, the questions with the panelists. Uh, so culture eats strategy for breakfast, a phrase uh, originated by Peter Ducker. Uh, the reality is strategy, capability, culture, and I would say technology needs to be aligned to, to drive successful transformation or digital transformation. It radiates through every action taken inside an organization, including deciding what products and how it is produced and sold, which employees are hired and retained, which customers are serviced and how, what is measured and reported, and where time and money are invested. Leaders who are serious about creating the organization of tomorrow have a simple choice. They can stay with the culture norm that created their prior success, or they can do, they can work hard to change themselves to ensure success in the future digital organization. Today's leaders need to take personal journey to avoid the fate that has befallen iconic companies such as Blockbuster, Kodak, and so many others. And it starts with three steps. The first, examine personal values and behavior in order to redefine. So if you don't, if you can't understand what your values are and what your behaviors today, you cannot redefine for the new age. And then communicating the value, new value widely throughout the organization. Measuring what matters, you know, the performance of the new initiatives and investment that are necessary. A recent article published by MIT Sloan Management Review highlight how modern IT workforce must be equipped with four behavioral competencies in order to meet current and future business needs. And I'm going to highlight that three or uh, four of those. And then our panel discussion, you know, will be based on that. And our panel would uh, provide more information on that or their views about this. The first one is manage role complexity. Today's digital organization requires, you know, a lot of things, uh, the skills, skill profile, which is, I would say, a T-shape. You know? So you have to have a breadth in one area, but you have to understand the throughout end-to-end -end processes and the technologies used in your organization. Connect, collaborate, and integrate knowledge. The technology is changing so fast. We need to make sure that we collaborate with new companies, startups, industry experts, education, academia, everything to bring knowledge inside the organization. Manage conflicting demand. We have an organization which is running, which is a bread and butter, butter, which is our or current organization. So we need to make sure that once we are st setting up for digital organization or transforming our organization into new organization, we need to continue to continue to perform uh, the perform so that we can generate revenue the way we are generating to fuel the digital transformation. And then the last one is the master continuous learning the learning is important digital technology is changing so fast you have to continue to learn and adopt new technology for the it workforce to be future proof it talent strategies must prioritize these four behavior and competencies in hiring and promotion so now i would go to our panelists and uh, i'll have them introduce themselves uh, and then we can um, get started with uh, the panel discussion 
the first I would go to uh, Easter. You want to introduce yourself? Yes. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Esther uh, Diedere. I'm the People and Process Transformation Lead within uh, Spirit Energy. Spirit is a for people who don't know us, we are an operator based in, in Europe, uh, operating fields in uh, Netherlands, the UK and uh, Norway. We started as a company, our digital journey actually only back in 2019. Before that, we were doing digital projects, but not as such that we as a company had a digital strategy, so where we were going. Um, with a small group, we, we uh, wrote a strategy for our company. So where would the company as, as Spirit Energy would benefit from digital? Where should we focus on, et cetera? And since then, we have been uh, setting out the strategy and we now have a digital function and we are delivering uh, different digital uh, the, uh, digital products. Uh, within the team, I'm looking after the um, everything to do with change management, as well as leading some of the, the products uh, regarding uh, digital workplace and automation process optimizations. That's me. Thank you, Esther. Uh, now we go to Elisabetta. You want to introduce yes, yourself? Hi. Uh, yes, of course. Thank you. Uh, I'm uh, Elisabetta Pulalli. Uh, I've worked in the energy business for roughly 20 years now uh, in different positions, uh, um, gas supply and LNG business development and sales uh, origination, and now in uh, digital. Uh, heading the uh, change management for ENI, which is globally based. Um, we started the journey uh, uh, two years ago, not in terms of applying technology, but in terms of transformation. Uh, and um, so I'm uh, happy to be here. So thanks for having me today. Thank you, Elisabetta. Omar. Hey, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. My name is Omar Patel. I'm um, responsible for growing the business at 47 degrees. We are a boutique software engineering company. Um, so very much a, an outsider uh, coming to the world of oil and gas, um, but we're bringing a lot of expertise around agile uh, and working with large sale data sets and things like that. Um, so really looking at it from an outside, uh, looking at change from an outsider's perspective, I think uh, on this discussion panel. Thanks, Amar. Steve? Hello, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be on this uh, panel. I'm Steve Johnson. I'm VP Digital for Petrofac, a uh, large uh, oil field services company uh, covering uh, major uh, capital projects all the way through to operating assets on a service basis. Uh, we've been on the digital journey for the last three years. Um, my background is very much at the asset management end, so I don't with a strong IT background and more um, in the operations engineering side. Um, and my role has really been to look across the business, understand how we can adopt technology to transform our service delivery for our clients. Thanks, Steve. So let's get started now. So I have put together you know, a few questions that I'm going to start with. And the way we're going to run it is I'm going to start uh, asking questions uh, to each of the panelists, and then uh, everyone can chime in with their insights um, and uh, provide their input. And at the end of uh, all the questions are done, we will probably try to leave a time for audience questions, and audience questions are going to come in, and uh, anyone who wants to answer it, you know, uh, feel free to chime in. So my first question is uh, going to go to Esther. So organization culture plays key role in success of digital transformation. Can you provide your insights on culture of empowerment, change to ways of working due to automation and digitization? That's a it's a big it's a big question. Um, I think it's hard to to really pinpoint like this is a recipe for success when it, when it comes to culture. Um, when you when you go back to uh, the start of a transformation, and I think with digital. People seem to be quite keen and, and quite quite willing willing to change. Um, so so that that is a that's quite a good thing uh, for us. But where the, the tricky bit comes is people are willing to change, but they're willing to change in their own uh, in their own ways. So it's almost like when you put digital transformation somewhere, it's 
it goes straight into the technology. Um, so people think it's getting a dashboard or it's getting some some flashy new tool, um, whereas actually the 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 actual change or the adaptation is in how you're going to use that tool tool or how you're going to use that dashboard. Are you keep using it the same way as what we did before? Then we are not transforming. Um, I think that's for us has been quite a it, it's a hard thing because everybody is is focused on focusing on the product, on the solution, whereas you have to change people's behavior. You have to change their minds and their hearts. They're willing to use it, but they often just use it in the way that they used it before. Um, so from a from a change perspective and a success uh, perspective, it, it really is about, so why are we doing it? What are we, what's in there for you? What's in it for you? So how can you best use it? How do we get the value out of it uh, within the organization? I think if you look at success factors, that's that's one. It's really, I think it it, it goes a little bit back to the to our previous uh, presenter. You really have to understand the culture of your company as well, because it's not that you can roll out a, a program and say, well, this is going to be success because this is this is going to work. The, you already have an existing culture in your company. So knowing that and knowing where the pain points are or where the easy change bits are, that is that is valuable knowledge because that helps you to, to, to go further. So what we, what we have found works well is, and it's nothing, you know, fancy smancy, but it's having that um, working group on the ground. So for example, for Digital Workplace, we have created a group of champions and digital workplace is everything to do with Microsoft 365. It's a small thing, but it's a big change in how people are working, at least within spirit. So we have a group that is in the organization. It's there, they are champion, championing it. They are learning it. They are doing it themselves. So actually the change is coming from them. So everything what we do is for the business. So it's the business who wants to change, it's the business who are changing. And having that force, basically creating small changes around the organization and showing actually if you do it like this, we will save you 10 minutes a day. Or if, if you actually, if you're looking for data, but if you put it like this, if you tag it or whatever, you can easily find it. Look, and that's, I think, where the, the small steps where you can make, start making the change in the culture. But you have to know your, your culture that you're coming from and you have to really focus home in, I believe, into why we are doing this. It's not about having the fancy tool or the gadget, which is often really cool. Don't get me wrong. They're really nice. But it's what, what do we want to do with it? Um, and how do you really engage with your workforce to, to, to get them to use it in the way they should use it? Thanks. Uh, thanks, Esther. And I can just add a comment here. Uh, this is what uh, you know statistically it says uh, the technology for successful digital transformation technology plays a role but um, culture plays more than 50 percent of the role you can have the best technology but if culture has not adopted the technology you won't be able to drive successful transformation in this world uh, agility is very important and you can only drive agility if every member of your team is empowered to do things. Definitely, you know, I would say that it has to be under certain boundary conditions, but people should have empowerment to experiment and make changes. So my next question is for Elisabetta. Uh, following up on the importance of innovation, can you elaborate more on how empowerment of middle managers Champions innovation and change. Uh, yes, um, I would start. I would answer uh, starting from a different uh, in the sense that um, uh, I think that the middle management could help in uh, in championing uh, innovation. I think, and it's a little bit uh, uh, provocative, but I will argue argue on that. Uh, um, the concept itself of middle management uh, is uh, um, uh, is old. I mean, it's it's old. Uh, I think uh, um, I think really that just discussing about middle management uh, um, is uh, is something which 
milestone of uh, uh, the old managerial uh, I like very much what you said at the beginning. Uh, you mentioned uh, the article you read and you mentioned the fact of uh, uh, connection and the cooperation. So middle management uh, as it was, uh, uh, let's say, perceived in the past or uh, uh, the, the concept that was born in, in the past was uh, acting for vertically and individually. Now we have really to uh, disrupt the um, the concept of middle management, I think. So I think that uh, um, in order to really have uh, innovation, uh, we and to manage in, uh, in grasping all what we can get from a uh, new business model, we have to change the organizational model where middle manager in, in a way uh, has, has, has to change skin completely uh, as, as really uh, to, to work differently like uh, Esther was mentioning. Esther was mentioning uh, you, you can do uh, new things using old rules. So uh, middle management uh, as we have in our company uh, and it's a reality, I mean we, we still have to work a lot uh, in order to push this concept to be avoided, um, the, you need uh, to, uh, to, to change really the, the organization. So uh, I think that uh, we, we, in, in this uh, digital uh, world uh, where all has changed, uh, we have changed the behaviors, will it or not, uh, we have to change the workflow. Uh, and uh, and we can't uh, uh, match the, the main target, which is uh, the agile, the simplification, because middle management in the concept means bureaucracy. And bureaucracy, I think, is contrary to the concept of uh, agile. Uh, and um, and so I think has to be changed. So it's a little bit provocative, but I am really convinced about that. I mean, uh, continuing with an old organizational scheme, we really prevents uh, uh, real innovation. So um, my suggestion would really uh, to, to, to try to make the big step. I mean, move perspective. Uh, let's avoid talking about middle management, but let's talk about, as you mentioned, Nordin, about everybody. Everybody has uh, to contribute. Uh, we have to work a little bit more on uh, a project-based based perspective where everybody play, plays a role. And uh, the middle management, I mean, the old concept of middle management has a great value because uh, they know how to, um, they have the experience, uh, we, we can exploit within the teams uh, their, um, their, their great uh, competence uh, and, um, and of course uh, they, they, they have a, um, an easier, uh, they are an easier translator towards the top management. So in any case, they have really to be renewed as a concept let's uh, uh, delete that that word uh, and uh, and i think uh, we, we may gain uh, by making this step uh, a, a renewed motiv motivation of uh, the middle management that then will give the big uh, the big boost uh, to to innovation so um, to overcome uh, the business as usual uh, that tesser was also mentioning we need to play uh, with new rules which is uh, really transforming also the organizational structure. So in that case, we, we really get agile, we avoid filtering roles, we avoid uh, working in silos, and uh, we, we move from an old style of managers to a leading connection world where everybody is really cooperating. Then the, the innovation and the change really happen. That's, that's what I think. And that is, just to, to finish, I think is, uh, is really a matter of uh, uh, cultural change. Thank you, Elisabetta. Uh, very well said, you know, and I, I, I would say that uh, it's like uh, uh, the, the new era, uh, everybody is, it's, uh, it's like we, we should use the term leader versus a manager and everybody is contributing to the success. And that only happens, you know, if you empower people, you don't need managers, you know, you would have leaders, but everybody is empowered to make, make towards the goal, you know, the, the progress towards the goal. 
And I just, uh, I want everyone else, you know, anyone else wants to comment on this point, please feel free to chime in before I go to the next question. Yeah. Anyone else well, wants um, to? Yeah. I was just going to add there that um, <clears throat> what I hear there is very much chimes with the concept uh, of democratization from my point of view. Um, you know, the best innovation we've seen is you make a certain amount of progress, you show the art of the possible, you engage users in the technology, you put the, the technology in the hands of the users, and what you then find is they will come up with a whole range of different applications, different um, you know, problems you can point the solution at, and as was mentioned before, really drive that innovation from the, from the ground level up at you know, all different levels within the organization. So the more we can collaborate, the more we can actually break down those traditional silos and actually democratize what we're doing, we get the, the advantage of the brain power of many rather than the few. And I think that's really crucial in terms of us really transforming the business and the way we operate. Great. Thanks, Steve. Uh, anyone else? Yeah, any I, I would like, yeah, I was thinking it's um, the whole empowerment and the democracy is, that is one of the biggest changes and probably one of the hardest things to to actually accomplish because what you say you we, we make small changes we give it to the business and and, and we let them uh, uh use it and and maybe come up with better ideas but the whole empowerment of everybody making decisions that's that's a tough one if you the whole way of agile working it's so different than what we are used to and then uh what was being referred to to the middle management layer etc it's a it's it's we can easily talk about it but i think that would be the it's the hardest thing the, the getting the actual uh, agile way of working in it and also being um confident in, in failure because that that's part of it so we we, we built something and it doesn't work because that's what we do. We we do a proof of concept. That's it's it's a big change in in, in how how companies are used to be run because you do your project. You, you, hey, look at this, or somebody else makes a decision for you. And we shouldn't underestimate that that is a it's a big change from where where we I think as an oil and gas industry are are coming from. It's it's, it's right. difficult. Okay, thanks. Uh... Thanks, and uh, I, I would say, you know, the empowerment, the response, authority comes with responsibility, you know. So if, if you empower everybody to do anything, it's going to create a chaos, you know. So there <laughs> needs to be some kind of uh, boundary conditions. Uh, some Something needs to be there, you know, to control it, to synchronize things that people are moving in the right direction. So. It's not empowerment doesn't mean, you know, that everybody can do anything they want, uh, but it mm -hmm. has to be within certain guidelines. Yes. You know? So that's very important. Uh, so anyone else has a comment before I go to the next uh, panelist? Any Anyone wants to add anything else? Uh, okay, so now I'm gonna go, so talk about, you know, I'm gonna go to Amar. Uh, in um, various things, you know, in the digital organization, there are a lot of challenges as well as definitely a lot of, uh, you know, opportunities there. Uh, so let's talk about, um, just like I mentioned in my introduction about the role complexity. You know, people have to have a breadth of knowledge because in an agile team, you know, you have to work in one team, you're part of one squad, uh, you're working on it and then you're done with it. You delivered your incremental value. Now you want to move on to the different things. So you need some transferable skills and some skills, like I said, the breadth as well as depth in some area. So yeah. can you elaborate a little bit more on the role complexity? I, absolutely. I, I think one thing I'm, I'm going to pick up on a little bit as um, themes, um, and it, this was a great discussion. Um, so I'm, like I said, I'm a digital native. I've worked in software companies for over 20 years, um, small, you know, agile software companies. So in a sense, I'm, I'm coming from, I guess, uh, almost like a Nirvana. I've never had a middle, middle manager. Um, but I think one thing that's very clear is that there's a, a startup mentality uh, that's consistent with all of them. And you can see this mentality, uh, you know, at Google, Amazon, uh, SpaceX, uh, many other companies uh, that, that are disrupting, you know, existing markets, for example. I, I think one thing that, that is very clear is that everyone, every member of a team 
an individual role. Um, everyone is customer focused or customer obsessed even. Um, we're all looking for a project-based outcome. It's not about optimizing a process for efficiency, but it might be, but I think coming from an oil and gas sort of perspective, everything is about process optimization and, and reducing cost. Um, and I think, you know, when you look at the software industry, it's very much project focused or customer success focused. Um, so I think, you know, we're going to start seeing this notion of customer focus, uh, both internal customers as well as external coming into, um, I think, affecting the, the, the role complexity. And I think, you know, when you, when you say T-shaped uh, person, yes, we're going to have, you know, specific domain uh, expertise, um, you know, to a certain depth, but, but we're going to need to understand how business operates, how the customer interacts with our service or product, um, how it's supported, how it's maintained, you know, what the end of life is, for example, and, and, yeah, and that kind of thing. So I, I think as digital takes hold, um, we're also going to start seeing, um, the time horizons for making decisions becoming smaller and shorter and shorter. Uh, and this is going to be driven by external factors. Um, and some of which we're not in control of, um, but also things like internal improvements as data um, and transparency, you know, within organizations um, sort of uh, um, uh, grows. Um, and I think finally, and I'm picking up again uh, on, on the themes already discussed here, teams are going to become more mixed. They're going to become more cross-functional and they're going to be much more product and service focused. So you'll have, you know, from sales to delivery across a specific product or function, and that'll include technology and everything else in between um, to, to deliver that experience as low friction as possible to, to the end customer. Um, so I, I think it's, you know, what I'm presenting here, I think is gonna be quite, quite a change um, to, you know, possibly existing uh, roles, um, you know, or, or it's showing where the friction might be as, as you transform into, into this world, I think. Okay, thanks, Amar. So I'm I'm gonna uh, continue with question uh, for you, Amar. Uh, so uh, as you know that in um, old tradition, you know we used to have uh, people who would hold the knowledge to themselves uh, for for various reason. You know you didn't want to share it. Uh, and there is there there in this culture or in this digital age, you know that's not possible you know that's not going to drive organization to digital organization or successful uh, because the technology is changing so much you know if you keep your keep information to yourself you don't know what's going on in the market uh, so that you can bring innovation from outside into inside the company uh, so you have to be able to collaborate uh, and then sometimes you know there's a conflict arises because of you know some mentality or the culture can you elaborate more on, you know, how to connect, collaborate, and what is the impact? Uh, is there any impact on, uh, you know, driving conflict because of this? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think connecting, connections and, and collaboration. So for example, the business model, uh, I mean, the business we're in, our entire business is, is, is uh, from, from an open source uh, perspective. We, we build our own open source, but we, we use, you know, open source around the world. Um, there's, there's a very interesting mentality here where, you know, you're creating intellectual property, but it's available to the masses. Um, I think here is a huge enabler uh, around, around delivering value. Um, so I think one of the things that, that the oil and gas industry probably needs to do, you know, while, while there's this sort of notion of, of hoarding uh, data and, and, and information is, is to start opening up, to start looking outside um, the own organization to partner organizations to you know external consultancies to see you know where is best practice what's happening out there you know I mean, open source is an incredible power uh, in, in in this um, sort of uh, business um, I think you know obviously alongside that mentality is is the notion of transparency uh, and unlocking I think what what I would call organizational transparency so taking friction out of how information and data flows across the organization from one side to another. And, you know, again, that comes back to my previous point about how, you know, you can shorten decisions around uh, or shorten the time horizons around decision making. I think also in turn, by doing so, you increase the, the flow of value through an organization, um, which again, you know, relates to agile concepts, um, you know, if you really do want to uh, adopt them. But the idea is that then you could start creating almost like a stream um, based view of an organization where you have, you know, real time or intraday data coming in um, from various sources and you're able to make very short uh, sort of um, uh, time based decisions around this information. Um, and that can be the key to you know, a lot of advantage here. 
Um, I think also uh, a key point is authenticity. Um, you know, when you're owning more uh, of a project or, uh, uh, you know, an outcome, um, you really have to be authentic about adding value and, and you know, with intent uh, as much as possible. So, uh, you know, this, this in a sense, uh, when you look at conflict, for example, um, conflict's inevitable, uh, you know, people have different ideas, um, but it can be productive, uh, you know, in terms of, of change. Uh, and obviously, I think the best kind of conflict, and, and this has come up a couple of times in, in previous panels, um, is where an existing rationale is being questioned. You know, why are we doing something the way we've always done it um, when, you know, we've got potentially enablers that actually take us a step change above this uh, or to improve, um, you know, our, our, our current standing or our customers' customer uh, standing. Um, and you can only do that, I think, when you have an environment of, of safety and, as I said, authenticity, um, you know, if you don't have that culture of safety of being able to challenge status quo or the way things are done, then you could have, uh, you know, you, you, you could um, diminish the culture, I think, in terms of uh, digital sort of uh, uh, adaptation and, 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 and growth. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure what everyone else thinks. Um, <laughs> No, that, that's, that's great. So I want to make a couple of points and then I'll open it up, you know, for other panelists to chime in. So what I would say, you know, for this conflict resolution and stuff, you know, I would say empathy is very important. You know, if you have an empathy, you know, some person who's, who's so you can re remove the conflict. You know, if you have an empathy, you understand where this person is coming for and you can have, you know, rational discussion, uh, then you would resolve it. And then the other point that I want to make here is that this technology era, not everybody is expert in everything. So collaboration, connecting, sharing information is very important. If somebody comes and tells me that I am an expert in whole technology, you know, I would not believe it because technology is complex. It's evolving so quickly. Nobody is expert. But what you need to do is you need to understand, you know, what the technology is, share knowledge, learn and continue. You know, that's that's the key for digital trans successful digital transformation. Anyone else? wants to chime in Elizabeth um, or uh, Steve no, but go ahead. I, 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 uh, I'm sorry Steve please so, uh, oh, sorry um, the, the, the thing that chimes with me is the, the piece around well two elements collaboration and also not being constrained by conventional thinking um, you know speaking from our own experience we've had many examples where you know, through a collaborative theme of um, our own you know, engineers, subject matter experts, you know, individuals coming from a digital and IT background, along with the partners we're working with. You know, we've looked at potential challenges, you know, a, an objective we're setting ourselves, be that you know, improving project management or machinery uptime. And in many cases, you, know, you come up with the, you know, a level of what I would call healthy skepticism, um, creative debate around what is actually achievable. Um, but if you actually get the right um, you know, environment, um, that collaborative working, that constructive conversation, um, and open people's minds, you, you know, what we found uh, very often is the, the level of surprise about what can be achieved. You know, people who have been very skeptical in the past um, and maybe a, appear to be a little closed mind about what is possible if they've always done something you know, in one particular way or they don't believe um, you can achieve um, as much as um, you know, perhaps the, the, the individuals from a technology background are promoting, all of a sudden by them sharing that journey and seeing what is possible, they become some of the very best advocates. So you know, that collaboration, that creative, I guess, tension, but in a very constructive manner, I think is, is quite healthy. Great. Thanks, uh, thanks, Steve. Uh, Elizabeth? Uh, yeah, no, wanna... I, I would just add, yeah, I wanted to, to add uh, uh, one thing. Definitely, uh, I, I marry what uh, what uh, Steve was, was mentioning, uh, something which is uh, dealing with change, something which is really, really uh, um, great is seeing uh, when when people that, that, that were reluctant uh, are uh, are turning uh, to uh, to the new to the new behavior because they understand where uh, where they can arrive with technology uh, but that means that uh, um, in my view it's really a matter of uh, uh, being transparent and communicating with empathy uh, trying to to show to people 
that the ingredients of the recipe, which you don't have, of course, uh, 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 with all the ingredients, but the, that the recipe is really uh, something that you have already, is a combination of something that you have already in your company, like the combination of uh, technology, data, people, and uh, the continuous learning that, that you were mentioning at the beginning, and uh, that's really the, uh, the cherry on the cake, uh, it's example. If you show even small example uh, to people, especially people that are reluctant, then definitely there's there's no um, no no prevention to change. And and the the the, the rationale uh, or the, the rational uh, thinking is already is already there. I mean. Uh, trying to, to make examples of what you can achieve and, and to, um, to let people uh, talk, uh, the, the, to let the, the, the people that uh, did the project talk about the project, then, uh, then it's, uh, it's really done. Um, and that's the only thing I would, I, I would add on that. Yeah. Great, thank you. And I think- uh, So you um, want to say something? Yeah, I was thinking about the conflict. Uh, conflict. Um, I would say we have had quite a bit of conflict, <laughs> conflict in the in the organization, just be, because digital and the way how digital works with agile working is so different than how we were uh, used to work. And and yes, the thing is, we, you break through silos. You you suddenly get pull people in from all kinds of parts of the organization, and that sort of creates a heat uh, with different views. It's who's leading? Is it the function leading, or is it the asset manager leading, or is it? Is it IaaS or is it digital? But if that conflict is actually done in constructive and in, in, a, in a way with we are just trying to get the best for the organization, we're trying to get the organization move forward, we're trying to make your life as an asset manager or as a, as a geologist much better, then actually that, that little conflict, conflict and the heat that's being created, I think has helped us actually to deliver and to deliver more than, than that we wanted. And probably in a better way because you have you have an honest discussion and you are working for a company goal but you're not working for your own little silo um so a little bit of heat i would say is is good in the change in the change uh, journey it's great so now i'm going to go to steve you know so we talked about learning a lot you know the so continuous learning digital has increased the pace of change in both the business and the technology so the learning is the key you know you have to continue to learn learning have a learning culture to continue to learn new technologies and keep up to the speed uh you know with the market that's uh, that's happening you want to we talk about uh you know steve about learning culture yeah i think um i mean you're right the pace of the pace of change in technology and also just the, the range of different solutions that are out there in the market means that um, you continuously have to be um, focused on um, you know developing the skills within the organization um, but i think you know it's been mentioned a couple of times um, on this discussion already the piece around you know breaking down the silos so yes individuals who you, know, you might be an engineer, you might be in operations, you might be in the IT domain, and you have your core skill set. Um, but I think the you know, one of the key things around learning is the through the collab, through the broadening out of um, the collaborative working and the understanding. We to be successful in the transformation, it's no longer a situation where the sort of traditional siloed organisation with IT, um, you know, supported. Um, thrown over the fence, you know, uh, products, you know, for operations to use. Actually, we're in it together. Um, and, you know, certainly from our perspective, a lot of what we're doing is actually led by the business with the right skills coming together um, and supported by our CDO organization, but crucially also our partners, because um, no matter how much we generate that continuous learning through individuals within their role adopting new solutions where they've actually played a part in actually the standard and process the problem we're actually trying to solve um, and deploying that solution you know with that goal um, there's no way that we can actually have experts in everything so one of the key things also is your interaction with your partners you know be they the big technology you know, providers or small 
you know, um, you know, your partners, you know, providing specialist technology you've actually adopted yourself within your organization. There's a whole range of different facets there. And I'm very good at that you can hold so much of the knowledge within your own business, but actually building that network and that ecosystem of collaborative partners is also one of the ways that you actually keep you know, up to date with the latest developments, the, the best solutions that are you know, um, developing in the market, um, because there's no way that you can actually have you know, that, uh, that lens across the, you know, the, the whole of the market, the way it's developing, um, and the pace at which it's moving as well. Thanks, Steve. Uh, so I have, I have another question um, on learning, and I'm, I'm going to open it up for everyone, whoever wants to answer it. So every organization has a different way of delivering learning or training or whatever you want to call it. You know, there is a structural way of doing things in the course, you know, formal course, sitting in a class and learning something new, or you, you get on a project and work on it and learn, you know, by doing it. Personally, you know, if I look at myself, you know, I, I am, I learn a lot better if I'm doing things on my own, you know, if I'm doing things versus just sitting in a class and learning something, you know, actual context. So anybody have any views on that? You know, what's, what's your view on that? How should organization deliver uh, training or create a learning culture that every person in an organization is continuous to learn? I'll go ahead. Yeah, so I, I, th I think to be honest, it, it's a spectrum of, of learning. Um, you're, you're gonna be learning through your role, um, maybe as part of an agile team, um, but I think also, once once you start on this on this sort of um, move towards agile development, for example, or, or you know continuous learning culture, it doesn't stop. Um, you know, so you will find that you you are learning as you go. Um, but potentially, what you need to do is supplement um, your capability in your team or, or your own cap your own knowledge um, through formal training. Uh, you know, so understanding new patterns of of, of working with software or of, of working in teams. You know that are agile. Um, so I, I, I think, um, and also learning to experiment. I think that that's um, learning through experimentation. I think rather is is a really important um, aspect here. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's there's, there's it, it's complicated. I think, but it, it, you know, the, I don't think there's one one size fits all uh, for everyone. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone else? Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, Elizabeth. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, no, um, I, I definitely am for no class but actions, uh, because uh, like like you, Nordin, uh, the, the 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 concept is uh, uh, as as far as we we experienced uh, uh, the people uh, uh, learn much more when when they are doing, in fact, uh, and they, and when they are mixed up uh, uh, in teams with others, because. Uh, uh, everybody is more committed. So, uh, if, if I compare what is uh, uh, the return in terms of uh, learning uh, of uh, attending a class compared to uh, a group which is uh, working together cross functionally, uh, there's no doubt that the percentage of uh, learning acquisition is higher uh, in the mixed group uh, rather than uh, in uh, in class. So, learning by doing is is definitely. Uh, something that uh, is, I think, is more uh, efficient, um, yeah. and it's also more, it's yeah. also more fun because <laughs> you you experience exactly, it. Yeah. 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 Sometimes, you know, you have to have a combination, just like as a combination of both, you know, so some you have to, you know, instructional led training for like 20% uh, and then, you know, 80% you're doing things. So that's uh, more uh, impactful. The, yeah. Okay. Uh, the, yeah, the additional ahead. combination uh, the additional combination i think is uh, uh, not only the combination with class but also the combination with uh, um, witness uh, from colleagues uh, hearing the voice of yeah. uh, the colleagues uh, via video of one two minutes uh, are telling what they felt what they failed and what they experienced that this is very very effective thank you um esther you wanted to say something? Yeah, I think it just resonates with, with, with what the rest have said. It's it's a combination. It's um, 
it's you need to have sometimes you do need to have classroom if it goes into a lot of detail mm -hmm. you and people and it's it depending what kind of technology is and they need to really understand it it might need to be classroom but that that voice of your colleagues telling you or helping you is so much more worth than than somebody standing in front of it and and just doing the theory um mm -hmm. i do believe that sometimes for digital workplace um we have created a, a, a site so where you can easily find like a two minute video or something just like how we learn in day-to-day -day life now if you learn something new you go to youtube or whatever and say how do i uh, yeah. fix my own washing machine i would never have done that 10 years ago because yeah. i'm not going to read five million pages but i watch that yeah. little video and it's i think exactly. the same with bringing that what we do in our day-to-day -day life to work this is how people are now learning and i think we have to take that on board uh in in our journey as well okay thanks Esther. you wanted to say something yeah i think uh, in danger of repeating what everybody else has said i think the only thing i would add is that um, what we've aimed to do uh, and i certainly move uh, a bias and bias towards the learning as you do um but to help that you need to think about the solution you're providing the more intuitive the easier to understand the less complex you make it for a user to actually um, use and engage with the actual tool you're putting in front of them that aids that process but you know i certainly see as you scale there is a place for a certain amount of uh you know whether you call it classroom or having access to get you started but very much the piece around learning from your colleagues, learning as you do and take problems yourselves. You know, um, that's that's very much, I think, where you get more value. And the quicker you can get started, and you need to also think about the way you design the solution to aid that. That's great. <clears throat> great. Thanks, uh, thanks, Steve. So we are almost at time. Um, I'm just going to take one minute for Steve, if you can answer this question in one minute. So. We need to strike a balance between the investment in technology and the people culture, you know, so do you want to say, you know, what uh, combination, you know, how people, how the organization be successful, how, what kind of investment they have to make to create a light balance? Yeah, I, personally, I think that changes as you go across the journey. I mean, if you look at, um, I guess, just from our own experience initially, if you're starting from a clean sheet and you're really at the beginning of the journey, there's a, there's a lot of time spent in terms of, I guess, understanding the art of the possible, understanding the objective you're setting yourself, where technology will be an enabler. Um, but more as you actually get into that journey, and we've learned very, very quickly that technology is not really the, the key challenge. The, um, you know, there's a lot of solutions out there. It's actually understanding what are the business problems that you're trying to solve um what is the value that you're trying to generate so where does it you know where will the value come from and pointing and adopting the right technologies with the right process to basically um, release that value and the key element around that is the transformation um, the change of the ways of working the engaging with the people so i would say if you look at um, the end point which we're not uh, by any means at yet of a fully transformed organization the balance in my mind would be in terms of the investment is more around that change management, engaging the people, changing the culture, making sure the right processes are in place, all enabled by the technology, which is clearly an important ingredient. But the, the biggest challenges, I think, are, the, are, are around the culture, the people, the process. Good, thanks, Steve. So we are at time. So I want to see if there is any audience question. I, I can't see it. So uh adam or uh Stuart, do you have any audience question do you want to yeah hi it's, it's more Stuart say? here yeah it's Stuart here uh um, no there were no hi, there were no questions i think you did a good job of covering a lot of the topics that people were thinking about so uh no questions and as you say we are at the end or at the end of this panel discussion thank you so much uh Nordin and the whole team i think for a really good discussion here and uh, i mean i just yeah. pulled out a few key points from it Remembering earlier on in the day, I think one of the one of the speakers talked about 70% of digital projects succeed or fail down to culture, behaviors, and people. So that much less to do with the technology. Uh, and I think you covered all sorts of interesting points, like is collaboration a must-have behavior, or is that actually collaboration in conflict with competitive advantage? 
it feels like that's a whole topic, a very, very important topic that um, if you look at how competitive the, the other digital, you know, products and services are outside the energy sector, you know, they don't collaborate nicely. And so why would we? Um, and yet that does feel like kind of the, the behavior we're looking for. Uh, diversity of people and teams. I think there's more that could be talked about. It's a very good point you raised there. Connection versus collaboration. That's just a nice little buzzword or buzz of phrase there that uh, I thought was good and raises lots of questions. Importance of empathy. We haven't heard, heard, haven't heard much actually about specific behaviors like empathy. That was really good. And I love this little, little point around a little bit of heat is good in the change journey. How many of us have actually experienced full on sense of urgency in the change journey, but um, absolutely. So thank you so much uh, to uh, our last panel of the day.